This is a Drunk Mix exclusive interview with Lord Sear. What's up, y'all? Shea 45. We are back right here on the All Out Show with Lord Sear, man. Got the special guest, the big homie, the the the, 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 the homie dog, my brother, Master Ace. What up? What's going on? Man, the last time I saw you, you said, Sear, you got it. You beat me in Madden. That's the and last time I saw I you? Because yeah. I ain't played Madden in forever. I had to see you since then. Come on, man. I ain't played Madden. I've I, I retired, man. When you retired from Madden? Oh, man. Since since uh, uh, Ray Ray Lewis was on the cover. That was like the last oh, one. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a hot shit, minute. Man. I remember we used to do the uh, the Madden parties. Oh, yeah. It was the game room. If yes. Be, I, I knew, you know I knew it was game room because I had to go, man, fuck that. Game room was shit. Oh shit! And I'm like, yo, why they might cry it? Right over there on Madison, yo, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah, man, Ace, what you been out to, man? Oh man, everything, man. Touring, running around, working on a new record, like running around with EMC, doing, doing, doing shows. Uh, being a husband and a dad, helping my daughter with homework, you know, all, all, all that good stuff. Okay, okay. The life stuff. The, you know what it is? It's you know people tend to forget. That you're a human being at the same time. Is that you like said you'd be a rapper? Regular person. It, you know, yes, yes, yes. And it's hard to tell people in the entertainment world that you are a regular person. Yeah. You're supposed to be a robot. I live my I've always lived my life to, if it's regular as possible. Like yeah. like never on the extra stuff. Like I know some of the people that we know in the industry, you know, they, mm -hmm. they get to a certain point and start acting super extra and like like they don't put their shoes on one foot at a time and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and all that. So I don't know. I just I just try to live my life a certain way, man. That's just, I, I never change. I'm the same way. I know a motherfucker that was like, is this water? And actually, it's water. <laughs> I'm like, my nigga. There's no you... bubbles in it. Uh, yeah, like, what is this? No bubbles. I, like, I want my water. And I'm like, dogs, man. Well, um, so, all right, you've been touring. Yeah, I just got back from Europe, actually. Okay. I was okay. out there with EMC, Wordsworth, Strickland. Shout out to them. Shout out to Wordsworth, man. Now, how did y'all meet? Um, well, I met Words through uh, my man JF. He was putting together a compilation for this label he had called Mona Hip Hop. He did their EP, the Punching Words EP, and uh, that's how I, that's how I got exposed to them. Uh, asked him to be on my album Disposable Arts back in two thousand one, and mm. then took all of them on 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 the road with me f for my first first tour for Disposable Arts, and we just kind of hit it off from there. Became friends, and been, we've been rocking ever since. Fifteen years later. So um, now on the album that you're re releasing, a long hot summer. Man, you know it's gonna be a cold ass winter. <laughs> Listen, that's the best time to drop a long hot summer. <laughs> well, um, what's the purpose of uh, bringing out long um long hot summer? Well, a lot a lot of fans uh, that love that album can't find it on CD anymore. Like, you go, uh, yeah, you go to eBay, uh, it's like some crazy amount of money. Um, and once you see that the price is crazy on eBay, then you know there's a demand for it. So um, mm. I got I got with this company Below System who who are located out in Europe. Okay. They were interested in doing this deal to reissue it. We did a deal for it, uh, threw a couple of bonus tracks on there, and reissued it on CD. That it, it was already on vinyl, but CD wasn't wasn't available. So uh -huh. now for the first time in since 2004, really, uh, you can find a Long Hot Summer on CD. It's through M3, which is my label, and Below System. Go get that. Now, um, as far as the artwork and stuff, like now you got more artwork and photo work because it's a CD. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same exact artwork except um, on the back we've added the, the names of the two new records, um, but essentially it's the original artwork from the 2004 release. Everything's exactly the same. Now the production was crazy on it. Some great producers on there, man. We had some fun, some fun making that record. I, I, I collaborated with. Producers from around the world, producers from Croatia and France, and mm. you know some some of the locals. Um, Dr. Period is on there. Some oh, some, yeah. some some good stuff. Uh, did you ever one day or could you rhyme in different languages? Or did you ever try? I never yeah. try. I wish I spoke another language, yo. Yeah, yeah. yeah when I was yeah. in when I was in seventh grade, we was forced to take a uh, French class, right? And then when I got to high school, we had to take it again. So I had to take French one, French two, French three, French four. And I wish to this day that I would at least just paid attention and like really took it more seriously. 
instead of just trying to get the grade. Nah, nah, yeah, hey, hey. Because, you know what I'm saying, I go to France now, and I hear people talking. I recognize certain words, but I can't follow what's going on. And <laughs> I'm like, dang, I wish I spoke another language. I, I'd be chilling right now. But you have your kids learn different languages, like, you know. They they trying to what they trying to do is because you know in Europe all the kids speak their native language and English like it's nothing and it's the norm it's nothing yeah, yeah um yeah. what they're trying to institute now in the U S is to teach uh the foreign language at an earlier age so, so my daughter when she was in um third grade they started introducing Spanish in third grade which is way early like I don't know about you but they, yeah, I didn't get introduced to to late junior high school uh, foreign language so. They trying to they trying to introduce it earlier to see if kids can you know be more bilingual because the rest of the world is crushing us with that. Yeah, because I try to learn um not learn but I, you know for my thug Haitian niggas I know how to say stop by saying certain shit but I know how you know like but but if you hear them like screaming on you you don't know if they ready to kill you or yeah they hype that they seeing you and it's sad because I'm black and Puerto Rican and I can't speak no Spanish zero zero Spanish man mm-hmm. son it is yeah it's upsetting it's not too late is and, it uh, uh, well. I'll think about it. <laughs> I don't know, man. Come like, on, man. 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 Oh, man. I'll, I'll try. You and my, you get, get, I got a Spanish girl right now. So. Get out with my man Baby Power, and y'all sit down, and y'all start taking lessons. Shout out to Baby Power, man. I met Baby Power years ago because I remember I had an afro, and then he had an afro. Yeah, so everybody man. thought it was him. Like They thought it was me through him, and he used to get mad. And uh, It's a long story, man, but they shot to Baby Power, man. Yeah, yeah. He, just, he, was on, he was in Europe with us doing the music. Mm-mm. On stage with us doing this crazy hair dance. Oh no! Yeah, I recently the 20th anniversary of Sitting on Chrome came out. Yeah, how oh man, that album is just mega man. That album, um, for me was an important record, right? But because it it, it actually exposed me to a whole new uh, market of fans. Like, all of a sudden, I had fans on the West Coast and fans in the Midwest and fans in the South that I never had. They ain't know nothing about Master Ace before that album came out. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I, I, I did an interview. I did an interview in San Diego when Sitting on Chrome came out and the dude and on and on the station, big station, was like, so how's it feel to have your first record out? I was like, this ain't my first record. And I, <laughs> you take the background like, brother. And he's like, all right, moving right along. Here's here and here's a single. You know how they. <laughs> All right. And here's a single, born in a row. But yeah, it was it was you know he he had no clue. So it made me understand that while you know the crib here in New York, people was definitely not not rocking with me on that album. They was mad mm. at me. They was like, ah, oh, you on that West Coast shit now, and no, you know no. that was that was the conversation that I was getting on the streets. Like, what's up with you? What's up with that, yo? What's up with that? What's up with that West Coast shit, yo? Nah, you that know? shit was funky. I was like, that was. I mean, but the climate then was who side you on? That it, it, it was exactly, literally that. Like, exactly. you rocking with them? You rocking with us? Who you rocking with? Mm-hmm. And, and so that was the pressure. That was that's what was really going on for real. So until, until when when they when they get to the West Coast and see how the chicks are shaking it. Oh. And the cars and low ride. Oh, you remember the you remember the, I don't know if you saw the you saw the X rated version. You of watch that your video. goddamn mouth. Somebody stole my VHS tape, man. man the, I had the official man. The bikini version of that joint. You know a couple of them bikini girls tried to sue, right? What do you mean? They tried to sue. They was like, we didn't we didn't what are you talking about? You was on stage with a million cameras in the pit. Dancing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, so, yeah they tried it. It didn't work because you on stage with cameras oh, pointing at you. You giving mm-hmm. permission to, for you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-mm-mm. They ain't getting nothing out that deal. Get out of here. Eminem mentioned, um, and he mentioned you as one of the, as his influences. Shout out to Eminem. No doubt in his book, The Way I Am. What do you feel about that? It's a, great, it's, it's a great honor coming from somebody who's such a lyricist, um, such an incredible lyricist, um, you know, mm-hmm. doing it at a high level and, and, to hear him say something like that with the amount of fans that he has, you know, it means something. Um, mm. Some of my uh, my friends, like when he when he did the shout out on the Grammys, he mentioned my name or whatever. Mm. You know, my phone rang off the hook. People people actually thought mm. like I was that, that meant I was getting a deal. So I'm like, son, <laughs> son, we, we made it, son. This is it. Like we we we, we did we, it the time. We, nah, we didn't do nothing. He just said he just big me up. That's all it was. It, nah, it's, it's it's definitely a cool thing, man. It's appreciated. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, it goes both ways. He's 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 influenced me as well. So it goes both ways. 
how do you keep yourself relevant in today's industry? You know how? Um, you got to keep putting out good music. Um, you got to keep putting out music that resonates with somebody. Like, um, you're not gonna be able to. I'm not. I'm not gonna try to make records that make 16 year olds get hyped because that's just not gonna happen. Uh, 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 they 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 listen to something totally different than what you don't I'm do about. Fleek. Nah, I'm not fleeked out at all. Oh, okay. Nah, my fleek my fleek button is broken. So oh, okay, okay. yeah, so I do records that appeal to somebody, and that somebody is really my generation of fans, and a couple of generations before that. Mm -hmm. uh, because when I drop Disposable Arts in 01, oh, the people yeah. that got that album when they they were in high school, they were 16, they were 17, yes, they were 18. Mm -hmm. Those people grew up with me. So now mm -hmm. they're now they're now they're you know almost thirty. Yeah, the grown folk got kids. Yeah, or in sanitation, whatever they doing. Right, now. right, and they still remember. You know, so they grew up with me. That's great. Um, and when I dropped the Long Hot Summer in '04, that resonated with same age group kids, mm -hmm. 17, 18, 19, and they grew up with me. So the new record. Every time you do, do, you do a new record, you're hoping that you're gonna grab some fans. From that age group and those fans will grow up with you now your your legion of fans continues to get bigger and bigger every time you put out a record that's how you remain relevant now what do you think about the album streaming you have the album out that's on cd but is it streaming what do you think about album streaming i'm not with that streaming shit. like I, I i thought i thought it was cool because i thought it was going to expose your music to more people and that's great but then when i started to see the math on what they were paying per stream which is like basically you know nothing it made me realize mm -hmm. that um i don't want i don't think i want like this new record we've already had conversations like we're not gonna let it be on we're not gonna let it be streamed we're gonna take it's not gonna be on any of those or any of those sites mm -hmm. and i'm gonna see how that goes it's gonna be a bit of an experiment but i'm gonna see how that goes i want people to go get the record mm -hmm. and not just not just not just stream it you know um because those companies are not paying enough money um, we may have to put a, a, a class action lawsuit together as artists mm. and, and, and and force these companies to pay a proper royalty to to us. That, that's the only way that's going to work. Your thoughts on um, the decline of New York rap? He was saying that oh, New York rap man. fell off. It's not oh, the same man. anymore. Um, New York rappers are more down south. They copy. That's, and all I of that's think, true. Yeah, yeah, a lot well, of they see on TV. It's all true, but it's all it's all I blame it all on New York radio. That's what a I blame it. A lot of it is. A lot of I mean, that's much. what it is. Because the the mainstream New York radio DJs, if all they playing is down south on prime time and whenever they on, that's what the kids is hearing. And that's what kids want to hear. That's what then yeah, that's what they want to hear. That's what they hear. So that's that's what they bounce. They bounce into that. If y'all was playing something else in New York, they would rock with that. And 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 the young aspiring artists would aspire to make music like that so that's what's happening really um you know um it's 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 the djs and the djs have to do a better job they got to do better that's it um what well, because now you know now djs are really, they don't shop they don't buy records they usually wait for the mp3 or they burn or whatever yeah um a lot of djs don't remix take somebody's vocals maybe put on it not a new york beat but you know a lot of motherfuckers are not into the boom bap anymore I wonder why though. I mean, mm. what what's what what whatever was what happened with Boom Bap? Why why isn't Boom Bap cool anymore? What mm -hmm. happened? Mm -hmm. I, I would like to know the answer to that. Uh, because there was a time when Boom Bap and other stuff existed on the radio at the same time, and every and fans loved all of it. It wasn't like oh I like this, but I don't like that. They, it's what you play. You play it, playing enough times, people rock with it. That's 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 what it is. Now, like um, before we, before we start the interview, talking about Madden, do you? Still play any games at all? If you got, a I'm chance. so not a gamer now. Like, okay, my my okay my my daughter has a, a Wii, right? A Nintendo oh. Wii. So she be having me playing Michael Jackson Experience, dancing and oh, doing all, that. all right, all I right. be playing that stuff, like the dance games. Well, why are you dancing now? Yeah, yeah, I be all playing. Right. I be playing the Wii games Ooh. and stuff. Okay. I mean, you know, I, 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 she be she be crushing me, but I be doing. I be holding my own here and there. But see, with the Wii. You can go old school. You play Donkey Kong. You play like you can. You can. Oh, I haven't seen. We don't have those games. I would have to make the initiative to get those because she don't care nothing about Donkey. She don't know what Donkey uh, Kong yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would play the old games on that joint. Yeah, Super Mario, whatever. Here and there. I missed. I mean, I mean, I, I kind of miss it. 
because I was a big time gamer. But once my once my wife got pregnant, like my dy- mm-hmm. the dynamic changed. You know, gaming is like damn near a job when you really really trying to be good at it. And the time, the spare time wasn't there no more. Like I'm touring. Yeah. And then I'm home. I can't be touring and away from home and then come home and now I'm in now I'm in front of the TV world. for 19 hours like trying to get good and mad and be nice and all that. Motherfucker, I remember you said have your own controller. I did. I had my own controller, all of that. A special <laughs> controller. I pull it out of my bag. You ready yeah. to play? Let's play. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. but uh you know, those was those are great memories. I you know, that was yeah. a fun times for sure. Um but I had to kind of leave it leave it leave it behind. Uh uh, who would you want to work with now if you was a uh, collaborator? Who do you think now would, would be your, you know, hey man, I would like to work with that person. What, you know, rap ain't bad. Well, mm-hmm. DJ Premier has been on my on my list for a really long time, and I actually have a beat. Oh. I have a beat of his that he gave me a couple of years ago that I've been just kind of sitting on, scheming on, formulating what I want to do with it. Uh, but from a production standpoint, it's definitely premiere. From a from an MC standpoint, um, it's I'm weird because when I'm making a record, I'm not looking at like the dream. Who do I want? Who I who I ever always wanted to work with? That's not what I do. I go at who fits this song. Like who's gonna really make this song make sense and and, mm. and mesh with this song. Like the new record, I got I got Cormega on on a new record, and I got AG on a new record. Both of those guys fit the records um, that I put them on. Yeah. Um, but a very cool collaboration on this new record is the world famous Supreme Team. Wait a minute, from back, yeah, man, the God from, the, from the eighties, exactly. C. Yeah. Divine and Mastermind, just a lot of superstar. I got them oh. in the studio. Um, basically recreating their radio show on one of my songs and it's super dope. So I found a couple of these joints. I said, wait, because YouTube is crazy. Like, yeah, they did. Show, they got little little segments of their shows that's on YouTube. Uh, yep, yep. But they came in the studio and they they blessed it. It's nice. It's nice. That's dope, man. Um, now, the out, when, when the album come out? The new record is going to probably be second quarter, okay. 2016. Uh, we about three quarters of the way done with it. Um... About half of the songs are ready to be mixed. The other half okay. still need a few little little touches, little hooks, little things, this, that, whatever, fixing up. Uh, but it's getting there, man. Torres on the record, Chuck D. Shout out to it's cool, it's cool. It's coming out good. So Long Hot Summer, you can get now? Long Hot Summer's available. Um, okay. Below System, the CDs are out. Um, definitely pick one up, man. Um, I, I, I came back off tour with a with a batch. You know what I'm saying? You mm. want to buy it straight from me, hit me up. I got them at the crib. Oh shit. I'll drop it in the post to you. It's nothing. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's the ace, my brother. Thank you, man, for coming through. You they know how we out. do, man. Yes, you know, see man. it, man. It's too long. We shouldn't be having these long stretches and not seeing each other, man. I know, man. It's you know, man. Now you're not gaming anymore. We can talk, you know what I'm saying? Like, I be seeing your Instagram though. You be you be putting your head on all kind of wild bodies and stuff. <laughs> and, yeah, man. man. It's like, you know, I'll be in a weird mood, man. You know, let's do this shit, man. Oh, this is what we're gonna do. Can we get into the new joint? Why not? Let's do it. One of the, one no. of the one of the bonus joints. Yeah, now, now what was this joint? Um, well, we gonna play it now, but um, what's the joint we gonna get into? The new joint. It's called GMO. Um, it's a joint. Just a, you know, below system asked me to throw a couple of new records together for the reissue, just to make it a little bit more special. So I did two records. GMO is just one of them. It's just really just one verse. Me just going in rapping, like just spitting, like no no subject, mm-hmm. no nothing, just rhyming, just going in. Oh my brother, man, talking shit. Yes, sir. And it's out right now. Out right now. Get it. Pick it up. All right. Let's do it. 88 Shade 45. It is the all-out show. This is the all-out show on Shade 45. 45.